This is The Book of Life, a podcast that uncovers life lessons from Judaism's most important book, helping you power your day with purpose. Here is Ruchi Koval. When I was a kid, my mother bought us this whole series of books that I loved, and it was called Sweet Pickles. So there was one book that corresponded to each letter of the alphabet. And in each book, there was an animal who had a certain character trait that he was struggling with. One of the characters was called Doubtful Dog. I looked up the book on Amazon, and apparently it's out of print because the book is selling for $601.23. The book was called No Kicks for Dog, so it reprises this Tom Sawyer theme where Dog has to paint his friend Jackal's fence, but he doesn't know how. He constantly doubts himself. Anyway, I won't spoil the end of the book for you, just in case you want to spend $601.23 to read it, but this character always stayed stuck in my head. See, I am a natural optimist, so I couldn't figure it out. Like, why was Dog so doubtful? Where was this pessimism coming from? In the adult world, we also have a character like Doubtful Dog. Her name is Debbie Downer, and she's one of Saturday Night Live's most famous characters. She dates back to 2004. I'm really sorry for all of you named Debbie, who are definitely not Downers, (laughs) but the name definitely stuck. Again, why is Debbie such a Downer? Why is she such a pessimist? Why does she need to bring everyone down all the time? Guess what? Judaism also has a character who inhabits this voice of doubt, and his name is the Yetzer Hara. This character is discussed at length in Torah literature. It's this voice of negativity, you know, this voice that exists within each one of us. So the words Yetzer Hara literally translate to evil inclination which is basically like this inner drive to do bad. But in our Jewish literature, this voice is talked about as though it's a being separate from us, which is interesting because it shows that in the eyes of Judaism, each one of us by ourselves is in essence a positive, wonderful person. But this voice of temptation, this voice of doubt and negativity, that's like just this external force that's trying to pull us away from our mission, which is to become our best selves. So why would God create this voice of toxicity to travel with us through life? What purpose, right? What what purpose does this character serve? The truth is that every single one of us is on this earth for a purpose. What is that purpose? We are here to do good in the world and to become the best versions of ourselves. And If there were no resistance in this game, right, if if there were no competition or no pushback, then the journey would be meaningless, right? I mean, it would be like trying to play a championship game without any competing team. So God creates this voice of toxicity in order to provide resistance for us to overcome so that our choices are meaningful and so that our lives have purpose. This voice of toxicity is like a very loyal and very highly paid employee of none other than the CEO of the universe. That's God. He's almost like a spy in like the sense that he inhabits and is a master of many disguises. So, for example, he might sound like your own voice of doubt within your own head, or he might sound like an overbearing or rude boss, or he might even sound like a whiny, ungrateful child. He might sound like a friend who brings out the worst in you. But no matter the messenger, this voice belongs to the same character, the Yetzer Hara. If you think about it, the Yetzer Hara is not a bad force. I mean, it's an annoying force, and it's a difficult force, but its purpose is gold because its purpose is to make you work harder to bring out the best in you and to allow you to shine. It's kind of like a tough coach who never lets you rest on your laurels because he sees your talent. In the Torah this week, we learn of the story of Amalek. So the Jewish people had left Egypt with this pomp and ceremony, right? And all this grandeur and the 10 plagues and splitting of the Red Sea. And then God gives them the Torah at Mount Sinai with thunder and lightning. 
And all of the other nations of the world are in awe, okay? And they are completely intimidated and afraid to touch this chosen nation. But then came the nation of Amalek, and they dared to wage war against God's chosen people. They didn't win the war, but they did cool off this like awe and grandeur. And Amalek represents the voice of doubt in the universe. Amalek represents this voice of toxicity. It was almost like they said to the world, maybe the Jewish people aren't that special. Maybe God's not such a big deal. See, Amalek is the biggest cynic, the loudest pessimist, and your own worst inner critic all rolled up into one. So how do we overcome doubt? How do we get over this like cynicism and pessimism? It's everywhere. The answer is that we can overcome by trying to strengthen our faith. There's this anonymous quote, your faith can move mountains and your doubt can create them. See, within the same story of the Torah, within this same story, we also learn of the passing of Miriam. Now, Miriam was one of the leaders of the Jewish people in the desert, along with her two brothers, Aaron and Moses. Miriam was the personification of faith. She was the one who had tambourines as they crossed the sea, and she led the women in song and dance to thank and praise God for taking them out of Egypt. But where did Miriam get tambourines from in the Red Sea? The answer is that Miriam, just like Jewish women across history, had the faith in the darkness that things would turn out okay. So she thought to bring the tambourines because she was the opposite of a Debbie Downer. She was a a Miriam Upper. (laughs) And she was the antidote to these feelings of doubt and pessimism that we all experience sometimes. She had that optimism and that faith that even when things are so bad, I anticipate for when they will become so good. So in addition to this voice of toxicity in our heads, we are also each gifted with a Miriam Upper, this voice of faith. This voice is called the Yetzer Hatov, which literally translates to the positive inclination. Now that's your voice of your conscience, right? It's the voice of your soul. And it's the voice that tells you that you can, you will, and everything will be okay. And God is on your team and never the adversary. And that the voice of doubt is just that, a voice. That it does not and cannot have power over you as long as you channel the voice of Miriam. So when you find yourself feeling doubtful or pessimistic, try saying to yourself the following sentences. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. This too shall pass. I will overcome. I will get through this because I'm not going it alone. I have the voice of Miriam in my head and in my heart, along with every Jewish hero who came before me, who survived, who persevered, and who showed the way for us all. This is the Book of Life. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Momentum Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join Ruchi again next time for more meaning and inspiration from Judaism's most important book to power your day with purpose. You're listening to a Momentum Podcast. For unlimited inspiration, wisdom, and empowerment, visit MomentumUnlimited.org.